so welcome back students after loads of numericals which you have solved in uh, structure of atom i'll be finishing off the chapter with schrodinger wave equation as well as angular nodes and radial nodes so with this this is a thorough revision everything is kept in the playlist please watch the video and please do practice it as i said please maintain a separate notebook for your uh, world of chemistry because i'll be doing different different types of revisions with you all i'll be giving the concept ones i'll be making you do the numericals equals ones i'll be giving the formulas ones you know it's a combination it's a package of the whole chapter that is how you need to study right so if we have to start about schrodinger wave equation basically schrodinger was a person he's derived uh, an equation after his name and it's his given actually it, it is a key note for wave mechanics so what did he give what is the derivation everything we'll try to do so basically for your grade 11 cbse there is no derivation but i felt derive deriving when you derive a particular equation then only you'll be able to remember that's why i've tried to pick up the derivation part so this showing the equation this name was given after that the person who has discovered it right so what did i say just now i said it's a key note for wave mechanics so let's write that so very important he has given us an equation which is a key note for wave mechanics okay like what actually is this we'll go step by step step by step we go according to him what did he consider he has considered electron as a standing wave around the nucleus this is the most important thing let us write what did he consider he has considered electron as a standing wave around the nucleus with this concept only he has started deriving the whole derivation around the nucleus this is the main important concept to which he has analyzed right so now based on the standing wave around the nucleus so we are speaking in terms of standing wave only right so the derivation part everything will be according to that right so according or uh, for a standing wave the equation which is already derived right so i'm writing the equation for standing wave so what is the equation for standing wave <coughs> basically as i said his considered electron as standing wave said the equation for standing wave is given by psi is equal to a sin 2 pi x by lambda okay right so nothing i have not derived anything just showing you for the first step then we'll go gradually into the derivation now what is this psi psi is the mathematical function which represents the wavelength or sorry which represents the amplitude of the wave once again psi represents amplitude of the wave okay the height basically amplitude of the wave of the wave is so next after that what do we have we have a a is a constant here okay fine then what do we have we have x what is x here it is a displacement in a given direction so let us write that mm, displacement we will see gradually in a given direction as of now remember this given direction right now after that lambda you very well know it's a wavelength isn't it so lambda is a wavelength now with this particular information with this uh, formula of equation for the standing wave he has given us a derivation which we will start learning now what are we going to do we are going to now let us take this as equation 1 or equation whatever in anything let us name this as a now we are going to differentiate this equation twice so what happens when you differentiate this equation type we will be getting a derivation in this way so what are we doing we are differentiating this equation that is nothing but do do psi by uh, this is called as psi the wave function it is called as p s i okay psi fine p is silent so we we are going to differentiate twice this equation then what do i get i am going to get or write the equation this way twice as said i can write it as do psi by do x is equal to the same equation a is already there 2 pi by lambda i've got this out cos of 2 pi x by lambda okay let us name this as the first equation i have differentiated twice now further and i can also write this as do square psi by do x square c i'm not deriving it particularly because math just it's a chemistry part i'm trying to take it and derive the final equation right. do c square do c do square psi by do x square is equal to minus a 4 the square of it everything 4 pi square so 2 becomes 4 pi becomes pi square and lambda becomes lambda square 
because twice we said so when you differentiate that cos becomes sine 2 pi x by lambda this i'm taking a second equation but what do we know according to the first equation we said psi is equal to a sine 2 pi x by lambda that is what we said so let us write that but psi or uh, is equal to okay anything a sine 2 pi x by lambda this is what we said so now what will happen therefore we can just because you have psi here isn't it i am taking this one in this form this way so therefore i can write it as do square psi by do x square is equal to yes this value because psi value i am representing there this becomes equal to minus 4 pi square by lambda square psi this is the third part equation so i have taken this value and substituted in this equation Okay, 1, 2, 3 are over, isn't it? Now, so kinetic energy, this is important now. Kinetic energy of the particle. So, we are going to consider, he has considered the kinetic energy of the particle. Now, whichever we are speaking about, that particle has mass and velocity, isn't it? So, with uh, particle of mass and velocity. Okay, done. Fine. So, now what is the kinetic energy formula? Kinetic energy is equal to half mv square, isn't it? Yes. Now, this can be written as half m square, can be written as half m square v square by m. Yes, so let us name this because we have named 1, 2, 3, and 4. This Let us name this as 4. Now, what he did is he has picked up now D Broglie. According to D Broglie, because we have that thing in uh, D Broglie also, so I am relating D Broglie equation to this, not me, rather uh, Schrodinger. According to D Broglie equations, what did he, we know? Lambda is equal to h by mv. So, lambda square is equal to because we have this quantity here, isn't that's why lambda square is equal to h square by everything becomes square m square v square. I will take out this m square v square outside. So, m square v square is equal to lambda square comes down h square by lambda square. Why did I take? Because this m square is here. I can substitute this value in this quantity, isn't it? Right. So let's come back. Now I've got. Let us name this uh, m square and h square. Now, now what we'll do is I got this. Now we'll substitute this one in kinetic energy equation. So when I substitute this value in the kinetic energy equation, um, what do I get? K kinetic energy is equal to half s into h square by m lambda square. So this let us take this equation as five. Right. So now I can also like uh, we have one more equation in equation 3 isn't it. What do we get in equation 3? Let's go back and see the page. So here in equation 3 <coughs> I have got so this is our equation yes. In equation 3 what did we get? We have uh, from this particular thing I, I can I think uh, see here there is a psi square isn't it. Okay so from equation 3 what can I take lambda square I can take out isn't it. So because this lambda square value already I can take from this one and substitute. Let's see how I am substituting. So now what am I going going to do from equation 3 lambda square is equal to minus 4 pi square by psi by do square psi by do x square fine let us name this as equation number 6 now substitute the value of lambda square in equation 5 see i've got lambda this one lambda square this lambda square take it and substitute here this whole thing will be substituted here so let us write substituting value of lambda in equation 5. When you substitute lamb value of lambda in equation 5, what do you get? Basically, you get kinetic energy is equal to minus of half, because this minus is here, you go there, minus of half m into h square by 4 pi square psi into do square psi by do x square okay i substitute the whole thing here nothing else right i can further write this as this can be written as kinetic energy is equal to minus of h square by 8 pi 4 to the 8 8 pi m psi see 8 pi m psi further into do square psi by do x square 
right fine now the total energy of the particle what what is the total energy so whenever you're speaking about kinetic energy we very well know total energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy so let us write that because we're trying to relate one concept to the other so what is total energy total energy of a particle of a particle is equal to what is equal to so total energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy yes so now take this kinetic energy this side kinetic energy is equal to get this total energy e minus p okay right so uh, what do we have here basically <coughs> this whole thing is equal to how much is the energy uh, value which you got it is h square by 8 pi this is this is the value isn't it so let us write that this is equal to h square by 8 pi square m the same thing I'm copying into dou square say by dou x square I can also write it as I can also write the same thing as dou square psi by dou x square is equal to minus 8 pi square m by h square into I am substituting this value here e minus p dot e psi okay I have just rearranged this and substituted the value of uh, that one the dou square psi I took this out and everything got rearranged yes fine now uh, further i need to further solve this this is still incomplete yes so now this whole thing whatever we have got what do we get now we have got dou square uh, psi by dou x square plus 8 pi square m by h square e minus potential energy psi is equal to zero now what is this this is a schrodinger equation one dimension so let us write that this is schrodinger equation in one dimension 1d okay now but we have already learnt uh, the cartesian coordinates isn't it? the polar coordinates and the cartesian coordinates which were denoted on all the x y and z axis so those are called space coordinates so what do we do we, we need to generalize this reaction so this can it is generalized by three space coordinates it's three space coordinates that is x y z fine so that uh, space coordinates which we the, with that I, I i can't simply write like psi is uh, dou square psi i will expand it now what is that dou square psi by dou x square according along the three space coordinates plus dou square psi by dou y square plus dou square psi by dou z square plus 8 pi square m by h square this is still there e minus p dot e psi is equal to 0 fine so in, instead of writing this whole thing this whole thing can be replaced as psi together what is this called now this is called del square psi we this one you have to call it as del square psi okay so i can write instead of all these this this one plus 8 pi square is like that only m by h square into e minus p dot e psi is equal to zero what is this this one called del square del square psi is called laplacian operator okay i'm not going the details uh, students are given the derivation just uh, remember it is called laplacian no, operators operator right so uh, this this whole thing the generalized one this is what is there in your ncrt textbook this is your shorting the wave equation so so this is how the whole concept is derived hope i am i am at least given you the derivation this is schrodinger wave equation in one dimension and this is a schrodinger wave equation in the three uh, space coordinates along the x axis y axis and z axis fine yes uh, so let's come back and learn the significance of schrodinger wave equation so i'll try to make it simple now i'm going to write the significance of psi and psi square so mostly in the exams they are asking this fine so basically what is psi psi is a wave function isn't it it doesn't have any physical significance so it's a complex quantity which we have seen it in the um, derivation also 
fine so uh, what is it uh, as it is a complex quantity it represents you know it will tell us about the variation of a matter wave so basically if i have to speak psi what is this it is a wave function it is given in the exam just right psi is a wave function what does it do significant means what does it explain what does it signify what is its important it's going to describe the position of particle it will describe the position of particle with respect to time this is one simple respect to time this is one simple thing which i am trying to give you fine now um, it can be considered as um, like probability amplitude because why it is it is used to find the location of the particle isn't it so i'm telling which pos at what position at what particular time where is the uh, uh, presence of the particle so i can call this as probability amplitude probability amplitude okay right so this one you can write this one and this one now if i have to speak about psi square this is the first one this is the second one what is this the square of the wave function what does this give we call this as probability density i'm just making it simple for you all just see it is called probability density probability density fine so what is this what does this give this this probability and density it, it represents the wave function itself basically if i have to see so the square of the wave function gives the probability density which is which is represented by the wave function itself so probability density which is represented by wave function itself it's okay yes fine so what what actually you should remember more is the value of probability density more likely is to find the particle at that region that is important once again more is the value of the probability density that is psi square more likely means it's more you you will tend or you you have the chances to find that particle in that region so the psi square value is more finding the probability of the particle presence of the particle in that region also is maximum so students this is your schrodinger wave equation in one dimension as well as according along the three space coordinates that is x y and z the cartesian coordinates fine so students thank you for watching showing our equation please practice it it'll be useful for iit also for your je exam also so cbs students you can directly learn the showing our equation you learn the significance of science science square stay connected